everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Deinosuchus Between 83 and 72 million years ago, the Deinosuchus was the largest predator in North America. This isn't an exaggeration either. It was the undisputed top predator of its day, roughly twice as heavy as the biggest tyrannosaur that ever lived. The Deinosuchus was a terrifying prehistoric alligator. The largest Deinosuchus was an estimated 35 feet long, with a maximum weight of nearly 8 tons. It looked almost identical to modern alligators, but it was significantly bigger. It ruled the Cretaceous period at a time when North America was divided into small continental islands. North America was almost like a giant swamp, with large pieces of land spread throughout. The Deinosuchus was perfectly adapted to the watery environment, and so it easily became the apex predator. One of the interesting things about the growth of this prehistoric reptile is that the older it got, the bigger it grew. Scientists examined growth rings in the bony plates of fossils and found they grew kind of like trees. Unlike dinosaurs that matured quickly and then stopped growing, the Deinosuchus got bigger the longer it lived. With a lifespan of at least 50 years, these ancient alligators could grow to be truly monstrous beasts. The Deinosuchus was really just a gigantic alligator. It had the same physical features, except bigger. It also grew for a lot longer than ordinary alligators today. However, it was almost certainly the Deinosuchus's preposterous size that caused it to go extinct when the asteroid killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. The smaller species of alligators survived because they didn't need to eat so much in a world of extinct animals. Number 9. Dunkel Osteus The Dunkel Osteus lived a very, very long time ago. It first appears in the historical record in the late Devonian, 380 million years ago. It likely only lived for about 20 million years before evolution replaced it with something new. But during those 20 million years, it was a truly fearsome monster of the deep. The Dunkel Osteus was kind of like an armored fish that could grow 30 feet long and weigh as much as 4 tons. It was an unstoppable killing machine. It was absurdly large and wore thick armor plating that would make a medieval knight jealous, but it had no teeth. The greatest thing about the Dunkel Osteus is that scientists have discovered a lot of their fossils. We know pretty much everything there is to know about these prehistoric fish, which were likely the largest vertebrates of their time. Scientists have compared the Dunkel Osteus to a living underwater tank. It had a bulging head, huge toothless jaws jutting out from its thick body, and it swam very slowly. Because it wore such heavy armor, it could hardly move through the water. This proved to be a huge issue with hunting because the armored fish couldn't chase down its prey. Scientists believe things would get so bad for these slow-moving fish that they would sometimes resort to cannibalism. The most impressive feature of the fish was its bite. Scientists have estimated that the Dunkel Osteus boasted a bite force of roughly 8,000 pounds per square inch. That makes this fish's bite just as powerful as the T-Rex or the Megalodon. Number 8. Ornithomimosaur Paleontologists working in Mississippi recently identified what they believe could be the fastest dinosaur that ever lived. It's called the Ornithomimosaur, and it's a kind of bipedal dinosaur that looked kind of like an ostrich but wasn't a bird. Tom Cullen, one of the scientists involved in the discovery of the creature in Mississippi's Utah formation, described it like this. He says the dinosaur had super big eyes, really long arms, strangely large hands with claws on the ends of their fingers, and absolutely no teeth. Instead, this dinosaur had a beak made from keratin that it used for crushing its food into digestible mush. The ornithomimosaur lived between 145 million and 66 million years ago across the entire northern hemisphere. The earliest specimens found in China were barely more than 26 pounds. But as time went on, these things grew and grew. The original ornithomimosaur was about 3 feet in length. But after 50 million years of evolution, the ornithomimosaur grew to be 33 feet long. We know this because of more recent fossils discovered in Mongolia. As for speed, no other dinosaur can really compare to the ridiculous sprinting abilities of the ornithomimosaur. Scientists believe the fastest species, the Struthiomimus, ran about as quickly as an ostrich at a dizzying 43 miles per hour. That's the exact same top speed an ostrich can reach when sprinting at full stride. 
And now for number seven. But first, it's shout out time. I want to say a big thank you to Niala Kuro and Chun's Buns for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you are new here for more videos about prehistoric creatures. Number seven, Archaeotherium. The Archaeotherium is an extinct type of cow. More specifically, it was an entelodont, a member of the Artiodactyls family that includes everything from cattle to deer and even sheep. On the floodplains of Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Texas, these prehistoric cows lived alongside other giant beasts like rhinoceroses and mastodons. They were around from between 37 and 23 million years ago. And while it wasn't exactly the most terrifying creature that ever lived, it was certainly scarier than any cows or deers that are around today. Scientists believe the Archaeotherium was no simple plant eater. It was likely an omnivore that not only chewed on roots, but crunched on bones. The most terrifying feature of the animal was by far its tusk-like canines. These things were used to dig tubers and vegetables out of the ground, while also crushing bones from prehistoric camels. The North American Pobrotherium was likely one of the main sources of food for the Archaeotherium. We know this because scientists discovered the ancient camel bones in Wyoming, with puncture marks that match the teeth from the Archaeotherium. But the mystery behind these creatures doesn't stop yet. Up until very recently, scientists called them giant pigs from hell because they resembled modern pigs but were more frightening. But in 2009, a new study revealed that all entelodonts are more closely related to whales. Even though the Archaeotherium was a deadly pig-looking monster that feasted on camels, it was more closely related to whales in the ocean. Number 6. Glyptodon the Glyptodon was a preposterously large armadillo that weighed almost 4,500 pounds. It lived throughout North America and South America from 2.5 million years ago until around 11,000 years ago. Its last home was in the jungles of South America, just as the Ice Age was coming to an end. Armadillos these days are so small you could pick one up and use it as a basketball. Not that anyone should ever do that. In comparison, the Glyptodon was about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, only twice as heavy. It even kind of looked like a beetle with its bony shell and short limbs. It was kind of like an ankylosaur from the days of the dinosaurs. To protect itself, the Glyptodon could generally hide within its own shell. It couldn't retract its head like a turtle, but it did have a massive clubbed tail to fight back with. Most of its body was fully protected by its armor, and then it could break its enemy's shins with its mace-like tail. Because the Glyptodon lived in South America at the same time as early humans, many of our ancestors likely encountered these beasts in the wild. Scientists have even discovered evidence that humans would use the shells from dead glyptodons as portable houses. These shells were so big, people could clean them, insulate them, and use them as rent-free housing. Number 5. Forus Rakos It was in 1887 that the Forus Rakos longissimus was first described based on a single jaw fragment. A fragment of a skull was discovered encased in a piece of rock, then preserved only long enough for a researcher to draw a sketch of it while in the field. Since then, very few skull remains have been found. We have almost no evidence this creature even existed, except the sketch and a handful of loose bones. Nonetheless, scientists believe the forest rachis was one of the scariest terror bird species that ever lived. Terror birds were flightless birds that lived throughout the Miocene epoch between 23 and 5 million years ago. There were a lot of different species of terror birds, but they all had one thing in common. They were nightmares on legs. Think of an ostrich or an emu, both flightless birds, but much larger and significantly more dangerous. For example, the forest rachis stood somewhere around 9 feet tall and weighed upwards of 290 pounds. That's roughly the size of the largest male ostrich in history. Its legs were strong, it could run at extremely fast speeds, and it had a hooked beak designed for tearing through flesh. The end of its beak was so sharp, it could use it like a skewer to stab its prey. Then, with a jerking motion of its head, could rip its victim apart. And just like modern flightless birds, the forest rachis had three sharp claws on its feet for stabbing and slicing. Number 4. Josefo Artigasia 
Josefo Artigasia was one of the most terrifying rodents that ever lived. It was first described by paleontologist Ernesto Blanco in 2008. Since then, we have learned a fair amount about these creatures. According to National Geographic, the Josefo Artigasia was so impressive it would make the capybara look like a measly sewer rat, and capybaras are currently the largest rodent at 130 pounds. The discovery of the creature is thanks to a single skull found in a piece of rock in Uruguay. The skull alone was nearly two feet long and four million years old. Even with only one specimen, scientists knew right away this was the biggest rodent of all time. Its skull was about the same size as the skull of a modern beef cow. What this suggests is that its body was roughly eight feet seven inches. It also likely weighed over 1,000 pounds. That's 10 times bigger than the capybara. The Josefo Artigasia truly was a frightening monster, a rat bigger than most cows. This was a rat so big, it wouldn't even fit in a sewer. Number 3. Chow Yang Saurus the Chow Yang Saurus was a small dinosaur that lived in Asia during the Jurassic period. It thrived starting about 150 million years ago. It laid eggs, only ate plants, and looked really weird. We only have a single specimen to base all our knowledge off of, found in northeastern China in 1976. The Chow Yang Saurus was not scary or even big. It grew to a maximum length of about three feet, and even its bones were weak. Just about any predator would have been able to munch on this thing for a breakfast snack. The tiny dino looked exactly like any lizard alive today, except that it walked on two legs and may have had a frilly sail on its tail. It also belonged to the Ceratopsia family of horned-faced dinosaurs, meaning it was distantly related to the Triceratops. Number 2. Camaroceras the Camaroceras was a very real sea monster. This thing was the original kraken, significantly larger than any living cephalopod today. It was so big that when put beside the giant squid, the giant squid would look more like a baby squid. The Camaroceras is believed by many to be the largest cephalopod that ever existed. However, no one really knows how big it was in total. Because we only have fossils of its shell, we don't know what the squishy parts of its body looked like. Its shell alone was between 18 and 20 feet long, but how long its tentacles were is a mystery. It possibly could have had eight slimy tentacles over 20 feet long, or they could have been like small nubby appendages barely sticking out from the bottom of its shell. Still, its shell alone makes the Camaroceras unbelievably large. The undersea creature lived during the Middle Silurian, between 443 and 416 million years ago. This was a time of wild evolutionary advancement for sea creatures. The planet had just gone through millions of years of climatic fluctuations. The climate had been extremely erratic, but the Silurian ushered in a time of climate stability. Huge glacial formations melted, sea levels rose a lot, and life in the ocean began to evolve at a rapid rate. This resulted in creatures like the Camaroceras being created. But what's truly impressive is that all these years later, these cephalopods alive today are almost exactly the same as the Camaroceras, only a little smaller. Number 1. Arctodus the Arctodus was a gigantic, short-faced bear. Not only was the Arctodus one of the largest bears that ever lived, but it was also a predatory killing machine. It went extinct about 12,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. It was wiped out with many of the other prehistoric beasts we know and love, like the mammoth and the saber-toothed tiger. There were two main species in North America. There was the A. pristinus, which was smaller than the A. simus. The smaller bear lived only in the eastern United States, while the giant short-faced bear lived from Canada down to Mexico. The larger version is considered to be one of the largest terrestrial mammalian carnivores that ever existed. This thing would make a grizzly bear look like a koala bear. When the bear was walking on four legs, it stood about six feet at the shoulders. It stood over 10 feet tall on its hind legs when standing up and could weigh over 2,000 pounds. It ate everything from vegetation to wandering deer. Anything that moved or looked tasty was on the menu for one of America's greatest predators. But like all the most impressive predators that went extinct at the end of the last ice age, the Arctodus was way too big. The smaller species went extinct 300,000 years ago, unable to keep up with the bigger and more clever animals. 
And then, more recently, the giant short-faced bear just couldn't keep up with smaller bears like black bears and brown bears. It simply ran out of food and died out. Thanks for watching! Which of these prehistoric creatures would you bring back to life if given the chance? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon! Bye!